Hey, I'm Jesse. We're in the book of Ruth, and in our devotions, we're going deeper into the Old Testament to look at the background to the passage uh, as the law sets the backdrop for the drama of the book of Ruth. In the book of Ruth, we looked yesterday at how she falls face down, bowing to the ground when she sees that Boaz has shown her kindness. Why have I found favor with you so that you would notice me, although I'm a foreigner? I want to back up a little bit. I want to zoom in now on uh, the context behind verses 8 and 9. That Ruth would find favor with Boaz meant that she not only found someone who would take care of her and send her home with lots of food, like we saw in our sermon this week, but it also meant that she was protected, that she was safe. Here's, here's Ruth chapter 2. Uh, verse 8, then Boaz said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, right? Boaz is older than Ruth is. Don't go and gather grain in another field. Right? There could be danger out there. Don't leave this one, but stay here close to my female servants. So we had other female servants too, who likewise trusted him and were safe. See which field they are harvesting and follow them. Okay, so some of these harvesters were female servants, but there are also young men who are working here. See the very next sentence, haven't I ordered the young men not to touch you? So that means that at some point in the text here, Boaz gathers all the young men. He puts the fear of God in them. You don't touch her. When you're thirsty, go drink from the jars the young men have filled. In Leviticus 19, we've seen, I've read verses 9 and 10 like four times already. Sorry to be so redundant, but I do want to establish thoroughly the backdrop here. If we continue in that passage, you're going to see something see something remarkable. All right? There's, there's a, a backdrop to that word from Boaz here in Leviticus 19. In Leviticus 19 verse 20, if a man has sexual intercourse with a woman who is a slave designated for another man, but she has not been redeemed or given her freedom, there must be punishment. They are not to be put to death because she had not been freed. However, he must bring a ram as his guilt offering to the Lord at the entrance to the tent of meeting. The priest will make atonement on his behalf before the Lord with the ram of the guilt offering for the sin he has committed, and he will be forgiven for the sin he committed. So there's this, there's this process to see to it that female slaves were protected. Now, when it came to instances of true rape, which we like in our modern day context, we would look at that and that, that could be, depending on the context, that, that could be considered statutory rape. That would be considered abusive if a man uses power over a, a hierarchical power over a woman to, to manipulate her into, uh, into sex. But the context here is this is a woman who is an, a servant of another man and then if you sleep with her, okay, she's not punished for this he is required to make a ram offering. So he is held accountable. He's expected to control himself. This was the prescription uh, in Leviticus 19 that was on Boaz's mind in Ruth chapter two. Okay, so with that backdrop in mind, when you see him say, haven't I ordered the young men not to touch you? When you're thirsty, go drink from the jars the young men have, have, have filled. He's telling her not to go to any other field. Just stay here. You're safe here. Stick with my female servants as they harvest. The young men are going to fill the water jars. You're going to have all that you need to drink. It was right for Ruth to be wary, but she was now under the care of Boaz, who even though in the land of Ju in the era of the judges where everybody did what was right in his own eyes, as far as, as far as what happened on Boaz's property, they were obeying the word of the Lord. And that includes the fear had stricken into them by Leviticus chapter 19. Those men knew not to take take advantage of those women. That there was a there was a uh, a process prescribed. They were not to pick up the leftovers. They were not to mess with the female servants. This is all laid out in Leviticus 19. And for that reason, Ruth is safe. She's safe on Boaz's property because Boaz is a man of God who, even in a world gone mad lives by God's word and conducts his business by God's word and has this beautiful, healthy corporate culture in his farming operation that abides by God's word. And that includes the protective measures put in place for the female servants. Man, God just thought of everything. God thought of absolutely everything. It's really cool 
to behold. The, the instructions that were given to ancient Israel uh, had clear, clear delineations uh, for how people were to, were to conduct themselves. Uh, in, in this instance, if, if a man has sexual relations with a woman who's a slave designated for another, uh, and she has not been redeemed, or I think in the book of Ruth, the, the, the redeemer, that she's not been, she's not, she's not fulfilled her seven years of tenure, that she's not been, uh, she's, she's, she's been widowed, but she's not been redeemed by a kinsman redeemer, perhaps, uh, then that man is to make recompense. Later on, the book of Leviticus would be, it'd be explicitly clear about if a, if a man does rape a woman, he's to be put to death. I mean, like the, the punishment biblically for rape was harsher than our modern day punishment. Hence the clarification that's provided in the text that he's not, they're, they're not to be put to death. <laughs> they had to st give that stipulation because elsewhere in Leviticus, that's the prescription. God took sexual sin very seriously and it's a good thing for Ruth. If you're struggling with laws like Leviticus and contexts like Ruth, don't compare the context of Ruth to modern day context. Can, can compare it to Babylon, like compare it to Sumeria, compare it to Canaan, which according to Leviticus 18 was an absolute raucous, bloody sexual free-for-all. Um, compare it to the savagery that was ubiquitous in the world surrounding the people of God. It's actually a safe haven for someone like Ruth. Having left Moab and come to the land of the people of God, she's left danger and she's found safety. She's cared for. There are provisions for people like Ruth in the word of God. There are provisions for you as well. So if you are in, in a debate with an atheist, with a skeptic confronted on some of the sexual ethics of the Old Testament, illuminate them with a story like the book of Ruth because the story of Ruth is where we see these laws lived out, where we see these prescriptions actually applied. And then the result is, the result is uh, an incredible love story. The, the result is, protection, uh, which was incredibly advanced, something that uh, Hollywood is in no position to condemn <laughs> because they're fraught with sin. Whereas in the book of Ruth, we see safety, we see provision, we see care, uh, we see protection for women like never existed ever in the history of the world. It's really, really amazing. This is the book of Ruth, but man, it's so relevant, isn't it?